The Stanford tree, the mascot of the Stanford Marching Band, is truly a one-of-a-kind symbol. It's been around since 1975 and has become synonymous with the Stanford identity. But what is it? Where did it come from? What is it all about? What's this deal? We wanted answers, so we set out and asked Stanford students. Extravagant. Crazy. Green. Green? Mascot. Bizarre. Tree. <laughs> Energetic. Fun. Quirky. Crazy. Yeah. Hype. Dank. Whimsical. Green. Needles. Spikes. Wild. And pride. Christmas. Crazy. Crazy. Unusual. Very unique. Energy. Fine. But what about how others interact with the tree's pesky personality? We asked someone who knows a thing or two about the tree. Hi, my name is Robert Siegel, and I was the tree 1977-78. So, the trees get variously criticized for, for you know, whether or not they, they fit people's conception of what the, the tree should actually be. The tree's wild. It's a lot of fun, though. Um, always dancing around and, like, spinning. It's a cool costume. Uh, some kids are super scared of the tree. <laughs> like, it's funny, they either love the tree or they like are scared to death because this monster is coming at them. So before the games, people from like the opposing teams and stuff love the tree. I mean, it's really interesting. You get like great reactions from mm -hmm. people. Like they're banned from a few airlines. They're banned from Notre Dame. I just I don't know. I personally think it's funny as long as it like doesn't harm other yeah. people. But I think as long as people are having fun. That's like what's most important. People not in the Stanford bubble all tend to treat the tree in sort of a couple certain ways, you know. There's the belligerent opposing fan, there's the adoring child, there's the bewildered sports interviewer, you know. They all think that they all come at it in the same sort of way regardless of who's in the costume. Stanford didn't always have such a vibrant, quirky mascot to cheer on its sports teams. Back in 1930, the school chose the Indian as its first official mascot. Unsurprisingly, many students felt this was offensive to Native American culture and heritage. So there was a mascot crisis for Stanford. Uh, and so the original mascot was the Indians. Yeah. And that was decided that that was not politically correct. And so they got rid of the Indians. And then they were sort of mascotless for a while. And so they put it to the students as to what the mascot would be. There were various proposals, the Griffins, and various other things. And so the choice that won was the Stanford Robber Barons. Yeah. Uh, and so basically the administration said, there's no way we're going to be the Stanford Robber Barons. And so uh, and so then they decided they were going to make the mascot the Stanford Cardinal, but it wasn't Cardinals the bird, it was Cardinal the color. Cardinal had been the nickname for Stanford sports teams ever since the first big game in 1892, when a newspaper headline the next day read, Cardinal triumphs over blue and gold. But to the Stanford marching band, having a color for the mascot wasn't enough. So the band decided they would do a, uh, a halftime show about this, and so uh, and so they were going to go through the history of the tree, and then they were going to introduce the new mascot that they had come up with. Uh, and so the mascot was going to be the the, the Stanford trees. The mascot was brilliant because uh, it was on the original Stanford symbol. It took into account the fact that the color was red, so it was, uh, so it basically worked out very well. Chris Hudson heard about it. And she decided that she would be the tree. She would make a tree for this. And so she sort of put the tree together uh, for that show. So she had wanted to be in the band. She didn't play any instruments. So she decided, this is my opportunity. I'm going to make the tree. The halftime show was very popular. Uh, the tree was very popular. And she decided that was really fun. And so she actually put together the tree. So she became the tree for, for that for the rest of the season, which was pretty much at the end, and then for the whole next year, she was the tree. The tree is actually the band mascot, it's not the Stanford mascot, and now they make that distinction. And it was, it was, it was much more sort of separate the, in, the, in the early days. And thus, the mascot we all know and love was born. However, the tree wasn't always the figure on campus that it is today. But Chris is, she had certain rules about how she thought the tree should be, and one of them is that she thought the tree should be anonymous. Oh, I think that she wanted the tree to be the tree and not the tree to be a person. The early trees are surprised that, the, that when, the, when they come back and they find that the tree is kind of a personality on campus. There's a lot of similarities between the way the tree, the persona of the tree then and the persona of the tree now in terms of how they interact, you know, and how they do the halftime shows and things yeah. like that. But no, it wasn't like all the craziest stuff you can do, uh, but it was, 
the, but the tree still had this sort of air of being sort of like wild. We could go anywhere we wanted during the halftime shows. The tree has become synonymous with the Stanford spirit and is loved by students and fans everywhere. Certainly the band and the university have embraced it with the fear of the tree and the party with trees and they've, they've kind of milked it. Every year in February, the band hosts Tree Week when all the aspiring trees pull crazy stunts to audition to be the tree. At the end of the week, the reigning tree chooses his successor. I think one of the coolest parts about it is the tree tryouts and just the whole idea behind it where people try and do the craziest things they can think of yeah. and you basically get the tree if you do the craziest thing, which I, I think is pretty funny. I can't remember. I think someone like planted themselves in a pot like for like a while. <laughs> um, I know someone lived in a plant, like a potted plant. They pretended to be a potted plant. They were held a lot. Like someone would bring them food. Not sure how they went to the mm. bathroom. I think they got five minutes a day. Oh wow. Where they could leave. But do, you, do you know if they won? I think they did. We asked Ben Cortez, a former tree, what crazy stunts he pulled during tree week. So, I actually tried out um, twice, uh, but the time I got it, I, uh, my, the stunt that I thought was funny, but some people think it's gross, is um, I made a Bloody Mary with my own blood and uh, drank it, so oh. I tribute to twice. Unlike other mascots, the tree costume changes every year. After the tree has been chosen, the new tree has to make his or her costume from scratch. Yeah, like I always like look for the tree. It's exciting to see because the tree looks different every year. So I remember uh, staff, we went as a group to the first football game during staff training. Mm -hmm. We're all super excited to see the tree and see like his new outfit and stuff like that. Yeah. So that was really fun. I think I like the tree this year. I think it looks really cool. He's got like lots of different patterns on the mm -hmm. leaves and stuff. I really like the tree this year. Yeah. When we first began planning how to tell the story of the tree, we thought we would be able to illustrate the macro personality of the tree. But throughout our filming process, we discovered that each tree was unique and often reflected the individuals under the tree. The changing costumes represent the creativity and individuality of the people underneath the costume. Dr. Siegel took us on a tour of the band shack and told us some stories about the costumes. So Will Funk had a very short tree because Will Funk was an incredible dancer and mm. he didn't want to be constrained by the tree because... Uh, so, but people, you know, said, well, what, you know, why doesn't the tree go all the way down? The trees get variously criticized for, for you know, whether or not they, they fit people's conception of what the, the tree should actually be. <laughs> I really wanted to do a deciduous tree as opposed to the standard coniferous model. So I was really into the idea of like having my arms free and shit like that. Yeah, it was definitely it was not uh, the most popular design. <laughs> um, definitely got you know people are very used to seeing the uh, you know the classic model. Um, so I was, I was really into the idea of, of shaking it up, as it were, and uh, I I personally thought it looked dope. Other than creating their own costumes, there are other freedoms afforded to the band's mascot. It, it's, it's, you, know, you get inside of a costume. I think people do this at, at Halloween and you can take on a persona and the persona of the tree is pretty much, you can interact with anybody and carefree and like any age and any, any you know, men and women, and especially if they don't know who you are. So there's yeah. no sort of like, there's no charge to, to who you're interacting with mm -hmm. and stuff. So in fact, most people assume that the tree was a woman, which I thought was kind of interesting. And yeah, and then, you know, a lot of, most mascots, most of them don't get to talk at all. So the ability to even talk, say anything to any sort of like inquiring minds, whether they be young fans, college age fans, or larger sports interviewer, newscaster types, is, is you get, I certainly, when I was, I got one interview, when during like, the, I think it was like the uh, Nittany Lion tackled the Ohio State Buckeye. Um, in the middle of a game early on in the season. And because no other mascots like, were allowed to talk, I got called by like some sports online sports magazine, you know, and to be able to, to a certain degree, wax philosophic is, is, like I said, a freedom that is not extended to most other mascots that fall under the direct jurisdiction of their respective athletic departments. It's not always fun in games, though. 
You know, being in the tree is hard. It's a lot of it's a lot of work. It's hot. It's heavy. It's uh, you can't see. Uh, so it's really fun. Did you ever run into anything? Oh, we run into stories? stuff all the time. <laughs> So when I was the, when we did the Cal game, the bear came up to me and was like, you know, essentially trying to harass me. And basically I, I think that the bear thought I was a, a woman. And so, <laughs> and so basically I like kind of told the bear off and the bear sort of scuttled away to the other side of the field and, you know. While speaking about the personality of the tree, the former trees and friends of the trees focused on the individuality of the trees and the people underneath. I think there's, a, there's certainly an element of the tree that is unique to every person that does it. I mean, I feel like the, the individuality of it is, is basically goes without saying. You can see that in the different costumes each year. You know, if you know the current tree or any of the past trees, you'll see that they're each lovely, unique, delightful people. We asked someone who knows the current tree, Dakota Brown, whether or not his treeness comes across when he's not being a prancing pine. Like, when you're just talking to him, he's a totally normal person. I at first, like, didn't know that he was the tree. He's just, like, a very low-key guy. Um, but I think definitely he embodies a Stanford student that, like, I imagined when I was coming here. Um, he's super, super nice, very approachable, very open to talking about everything about his life. Um, and genuinely, he's just a good person. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that positivity really radiates, but I don't think that he's like super crazy. Yeah. You know, the, the name of the game isn't pleasing people. If we were about pleasing people, we would be some kind of, you know, anthropomorphic animal mascot. You know, not a tree. I think it's an integral part of the school. So if you watch the tree, the, it kind of just does funny stuff and like mm -hmm. spins around and runs into people and it's just generally goofy. And yet, while the tree is truly the most entertaining and enigmatic mascot in all college sports, the reason why the tree resonates with so many is not purely entertainment. Rather, the people of Stanford see the tree as a manifestation of the true spirit of the school, representing what they love most about the place they call home. Oh, I think that, uh, first of all, I think the tree, you know, embodies what we'd like the Stanford spirit to be, which is just kind of like energetic and wild and creative. Well, I think Stanford's pretty goofy. Yeah. Like, if you take all the individuals at Stanford, I think you have a very diverse and, like, funny mix of people from mm -hmm. all over who have, are, like, smart and funny and just, like, a very, like, a bunch of very, like, diverse personalities. Yeah. Um, and I think the being of the tree is like the epitome of all of these characteristics of Stanford yeah. students. I think, I don't know, the tree sort of represents that like, yeah, life at Stanford is really intellectual, but we also know how to have a lot of fun. And I think that it brings out the personality of Stanford more because everyone here, I, which I think is really different from people at other like elite institutions or like predominantly white institutions, um, it, the difference between what I saw at like Harvard and Yale and all of that in Stanford is that everyone here has a very distinct personality and something that makes them like an amazing like human being. Not that all those people at Harvard and Yale aren't amazing human <laughs> beings, but like you no. can just, you can feel it. You no, feel I completely energy. understand. Yeah. That is definitely how it feels to be here. Just That's everyone so is amazing. Mm -hmm. Everyone has an inner tree. Yes, oh my gosh. <laughs> We're all little pines, <laughs> saplings. <laughs> There's a lot of unusual trees on, on campus uh, of the biological sort as well as the, uh, as the human sort, and so that's fun. At the end of the day, the tree may be known for its crazy stunts and twirling at football games, but it's also at the heart of the spirit of Stanford and has created a long-lasting community. There is a tree reunion every year, starting with the 50th reunion. I don't know if there was something before that, but there's been uh, every every year for homecoming, there's been a tree union. So uh, we've had as many as 10 or 12 trees out of the field. The tree community, the forest, uh, <laughs> is very, very um, embracing of each other. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a really great community, and you can, you know, all the time just have this thing in common. And so they all enjoy getting together. They all enjoy the tree union, and they're very different people. Some have gone into, you know, uh, law, or counseling, or acting, or all kinds of stuff, uh, but they all seem to come together on common ground and get, you know, so look each other up.